domain and range. I can't say this is everyone's favorite topic from grade 11. It's really not because the writing of this thing and how to write up domain and range can confuse people. But I hope by the end I can give you some things to hang on to that makes you go, okay, I'm willing to take another shot at this domain and range thing. And some advice on how you decide to get the domain and range. Okay. When you're confused about domain and range, when you're in the middle of doing homework, you're like, I don't even know what domain and range is. Go back to these two statements. This is as simple as the situation is. What domain and range is isn't actually complicated. Writing it down, that's complicated. Yeah? So anyways, domain is the set of possible inputs. In other words, all the x values. Every x value you're allowed to put into a function. And you go, well, can't I just plug in anything I want? Well, the simple one I'll put up there to try and motivate why we have domain and range. And I've got to switch to a nice color here. White, for instance. And we're going to spend a lot of time in this course talking about functions like this, and we'll definitely address them in calculus. This function has a problem. You cannot sub x equals 0 in. You can't go 1 divided by 0. Your calculator can't do it. There's no way to conceptualize dividing things into 0 parts. Not allowed in math. In grade 11, you just write those things as restrictions. You say, oh, x can't equal 0, or x can't equal 2, and that was the end of it for you. But it's not the end of it for us. We're going to address, well, what happens because of that? We're going to get to all that. Not to like chapter 5. But for now, we need to understand that some functions don't have all x values that you can plug in. Not every single x value is allowed to be plugged in. And we'll get to more and more of those. Usually, though, domain, there's just a few individual values you can't plug in. But we'll see some examples today. Then range is the potential y values of a function. You say, well, can't you just have all y values? No, you've seen a pretty simple y equals x squared type function and you see all y values don't happen. You only get positive y values of this and zero. So there's only certain y values you get out. So when we talk about domain and range, we're talking about what kind of x's will we see and what kind of y's will we see when we go to graph this thing. And I say graph there because all the time we used to do math help room, the grade 11's always coming into my math help room and always asking, how do I do domain and range? I say graph it first. Like, do I have to graph it first? And the answer is, if you're asking that question, yes. Step one is graph it. If you can't graph it, you probably can't do domain and range. Are there other ways to handle it? Yes, we will get better at that. But for now, domain and range immediate means get the graph. Now you're like, well, I'm not really good at graphing. Well, then that's why I'm here. I'm going to help you get good at graphing because it's not impossible. If, if graphing didn't go well for you before, there's no reason it shouldn't go better now once I explain a few things. Definitely this afternoon, key properties I'm going to talk about this afternoon, and then we'll do transformations tomorrow. By the end of that, hopefully you'll be like, oh, well, maybe I can do some graphing here. Maybe this isn't the worst, because I'll give you an emergency move. I'll call it the emergency move. When I don't know how to graph, what do I do? And I'll give you the emergency move to help you out. So state the domain and range of the following functions. The, less, the rest of this lesson is just finding domain and range of a whole bunch of different functions, starting with something easy and just progressively getting harder, and there's only a total of five slides, right? This is slide one of five, okay? Okay, when given in this format, when a function's given like this, these are just individual points. If you went to graph this, you'd point, the, you'd graph the point negative two, two, negative three, three, negative four, four, negative three, five, negative one, six. You just have these dots. That's all the function would be, would, it would be all these dots. You're like, that's a pretty weird looking function. Well, yeah, most of the functions you guys have done have been complete curves, but dots are allowed. But easy to read the domain and range off. If I just do this example, by the end of it, you might be like, oh, well, I like domain and range. Yeah? Because domain and range just means list the x values. Domain is, there's the domain there. And I list them in order. Actually, technically, you don't have to list them in order. There's no rule that says you have to list them in order. We do because it's going to help you later to just write them in the right order. So I wrote, okay, I know the domain here said negative two, negative three, negative four, negative three, negative one. Those were the x values. Let me just circle them all. There's the x values of this function. And I just made a list of them. And I put them in order because that was a convenient thing to do. Then range. Just list the y values. They, they're already in order this time. Two, three, four, five, and six. And if you're flashing back to nightmares about domain and range, you're like, no, I remember domain and range was really hard. I didn't like it at all. No, domain and range is not hard. 
You just list the x values, list the y values. Making that list can be hard, and this lesson's supposed to show you why making that list is hard, and hopefully uh, helping you along so that it doesn't, it gets easier for you. If it's just a list of numbers, you just give a list of numbers. Now, check out these curly brackets, though. The curly brackets are meaningful, and you people that are in data management are going to run into the curly brackets, so on. And those curly brackets mean, here's a list of numbers. That's all those curly brackets represent. In math, when you see the little curly brackets, we almost always mean, here's a list. That's what we mean when we put a, a, a set of curly brackets. You're allowed to use curly brackets for other things. But most of the time, it means, here's a list of numbers, and in here, a nice list of domain range. Any questions about that first example? Specifically designed to reintroduce you to domain and range and going, oh wait, domain and range, the idea of domain and range, not particularly hard. List the X's, list the Y's, that's all you're gonna do. I'll put that up here. So if later you're looking back at this and you're having trouble, list the X, list the Y's. That's all we're trying to do with domain and range. Questions there? little side note here to recover the stuff from the earlier lesson of functions. Is this relation a function? Negative 2 goes to 2. Do I see negative 2 again? No. Negative 3 goes to 3. Do I see negative 3 again? Oh yeah, I do. Look. Here and here. Negative 3 gets mapped to 3. It also gets mapped to 5. It's allowed to be a relation. That's what it's called when it's not a function. It's a relation, but is it a function? No. This one's not a function because negative 3 gets mapped to two different y values. So I'm nicely reviewing this morning's lesson already. More time here? Questions? Searching for that frown. I'm also searching for that nodding. Are we okay here? Uh, the nodding really helps me, yeah? You don't nod, then I can be like, oh, explain it more, yeah? You don't have to wait around till tonight to have, text me a question or ask someone or, well, the no was already there. Okay, that's good. Remember, the domain is just all the possible x values. The range is just all the possible y values. This will now start to heat up. Some domain range questions, you just make a list. Well, all the, we're just going to make a list all the time. This one, domain. There they are. They're, they're already listed for you. Table of values, domain and range is easy. Like, we could have done domain and range in grade 9 if it was going to be table of values every time. Just walk up and list the x values. There they are. Negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. We definitely prefer them in order. Range. Negative 10, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 6. Just list them. Just make a list of them. Is this relation a function? Does any x value go to two different y values? No. In fact, it's all different x values down here. How could they possibly go to two different uh, places? So yes, this one happens to be a function. Get really stuck on a question when it's asking you a function? Just graph the points, and then you can do your vertical line test if you wanted, and just check that way. Another easy domain and range question. Just list the x's, list the y's. See, because they're individual points like that, called discrete points, because they're just individual points, there's no problem making a list. I'm setting up for the tough example that's coming. You just look and go, okay, x value 1, x value 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. They're not all connected. The only x values are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And the only y values are, oh, I can look at the scale here, 1, 3, 6, 10, 15, 21, just list them. In order is best. And again, I keep wanna, I'm setting up the tough example here. If you look at that and go, wait a minute, I remember domain range being a nightmare in grade 11. Why is it so easy here? Because of the nature of these numbers. They're discrete numbers, they're individual numbers. Making a list is easy. It's easy to make a list of a finite number of numbers. You know, uh, just individual numbers like this. It's easy to make a list. Is it a function? Well, now that it's on a graph, we can do the vertical line test. We can look and go, is there a vertical line that hits the function twice? No, that never happens. Yes, this is a function. Good. We did three easy ones. Now four tougher ones. And I'm really going to talk about the first one to really set up why these other examples are tougher and why domain and range isn't the problem. Making the list is the problem. Questions here, though? More time? We good?
list all the x values. Here I go. I'm going to try and list all the x values here. Ready? Uh, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Yeah? It's worse. It's way. It's literally, no joke, it's infinitely worse. Here I go. I'll just do one decimal place. 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8. It's way worse. 0 0.11, 0 0.12, 0 0.1. Every x value between here and here. If you had to make a list, you'd be here your whole life trying to make a list of all the numbers, even making a list between 0 and 1. There's an infinite number of numbers in here. We're not going to make a list the old way. We've got to change the way we write lists. We want something that says every x value, very simply. We want to say x can be anything, any number you can think of, you can use as an x value. That's what this says. Does this ring a bell from grade 11? This says, take any x you want. Where do you find it? It's an element of real numbers. And real numbers, OK, we've got to talk about real numbers for just one second. All numbers you can think of. You're like, is there numbers I can't think of? <laughs> yeah, OK. I'm going to take a step now outside of this course to make you understand what real numbers are. I'll come back in just a second. All the numbers you can think of. You can think of 7.2. Yeah, you can use 7.2 as an x. Negative 2.7. Yep, go ahead. Use negative 2.7. 3.14. Yep, go. 900 million, billion, gazillion. And 2. Yep, go ahead. Anything you can think of. Any decimal, any fraction, all allowed. That's what this symbol does all in one. So you might look at it and go, oh, here's an extra thing to remember. Yes. But it's very, very powerful, all the x values. Now, back to the question. OK, I'm putting this down, stepping away from all this. This is outside of advanced functions for a second, reaching way out. Numbers you can't think of. You're like, there can't be any numbers I can't think of. Yeah, there can be. Watch this. My son, four years old, because he's got older siblings, the younger sibling always has the advantage, is awesome at counting. He's incredible at it for a four-year-old. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. even like we write down numbers like 1842. He goes 1842. He's just into it. He likes it. Okay? So listen to a conversation I could have with him and notice something interesting about what he knows and what he doesn't know. If I said to him, Bennett, tell me a number between one and four. He'd think for a minute, he'd go, and you'd see his mouth move. He'd go, one, two, three, four, two. And I go, yeah, two, that's right. Okay, now tell me a number between two and four. And he'd go, just a second, one. Three, four, three. Like, that's right, Ben. Here comes the important part of this whole section of the lesson. If I said to him, Bennett, tell me a number between three and four, he'd look at me like I was stupid. Yeah? I'd say, tell me a number between three and four, and he'd be like, Daddy, there's no numbers between three and four. He'd laugh out loud, and then he'd walk away. Now, let's just pretend you were looking. You were at my house for dinner, and I had that conversation. He walked away, and then I'd stare at you for a second. I go, do you see what just happened there? Now, the facts are he's right. He's right. For the numbers he knows, there are no numbers between 3 and 4. In his number system, his number system is about cookies. There's three cookies or there's four cookies. Sometime soon we'll break a cookie in half and we'll start talking about what the heck is going on here. But for now, it's 3 or 4. All the numbers he can think of right now are called the integers. Or they're called the whole numbers, if we leave the negative out of it. He can think of whole numbers. Later on, we'll say, oh, let's talk about between 3 and 4. I'll, I'll probably use money to start off. Money's the best way to talk about that. I don't have $3. I don't have $4. I got something in between. And then we'll open up that whole decimal fraction thing. Later on, grade 2 or 3 or something like that, I'll say, okay, Bennett, tell me a number below, below 4. He's learned his lesson. He'll say 3.2. I'm like, ah, that's very clever. Yeah, okay. Let's stick to whole numbers. Tell me a number between below four. He'll say three. I'll say below three. He'll say two. I'll say below one. He'll say zero. He might know about zero. I'll say below zero. Big moment. He'll go, he'll look at me like I'm stupid. He'll go, Daddy, zero's it. You don't go below zero. You might even remember this moment in your life when someone taught you below zero where you're like, no, no, z zero. Like it's like, that's nothing. How can you be less than nothing? Well, temperature, negative one, negative two. Zero. You can't, have below, you can't have below zero cookies, but you can have below zero temperature, negative one, negative two. So there's all these numbers. There's an incredible number of numbers. There's an infinite number of numbers. 
decimals, fractions, negatives, positives, all those things. When we say real numbers, those are all those things. Okay, now here's the big jump. I've slightly stepped out of this course. Now I'm taking the big leap out of this course. Square root of four. You know the number. It's another way to write it, but the square root of four is two. Square root negative four. You're looking at me like I'm stupid. You're doing the exact same thing Bennett is doing with numbers between three and four and numbers below zero. He hasn't learned those other numbers. And the facts are, I am stupid. Why would I start the conversation like this? I would teach you about these numbers. There are numbers. There is numbers where you can do square root of negative. They're not called real numbers, which is a bad, bad move by mathematicians. It makes everybody go, what, so there's numbers that aren't real? Uh, no, there's, there's numbers you just don't see every day. They've done a better job now. When you, take, when you study those numbers in university, they call them complex numbers. They don't call them imaginary anymore. Yeah? We've got to go a step farther. You can't see these numbers every single day walking around. Just like if I had cookies here and I was trying to explain decimals, I don't have the tools to talk about 3.74. 3.74 cookies, I, I don't have the weapons. I need money to explain it. I need some other stuff to explain square root of negative. You're like, are we going to do square root of negative numbers? It's actually pretty easy. It's actually pretty easy. It'd pr probably be easier to teach you about that than about some of the stuff I'm going to teach you this year. All that just to explain what this means. It means all the numbers you can think of right now. That's what real numbers are. Any number you want. Don't worry about square root of negatives. It comes much later. Notice this graph covers all the y values too. So you've got to be able to look at this and go, any x value is possible. It doesn't look like it, right? You say it only goes to x equals 5, but the arrow's pointing out saying this could go and go and go and go. You can get any x value, and you can get any y value. So the range is y element of reals too. Powerful symbol. When you want everything, you write y element reals. It means y can be anything you choose from the real numbers. Is this relation a function? When we got the graph, and that's why we, we like graphing. Maybe you don't like graphing yet. Learn to like graphing, because if you have the graph, it's easy to look and go, is it a function? You have to look at numbers and go, what about this number? Is it okay? No, you just look and go, vertical line test? Yes, passes vertical line test. Yes, this is a function. Any questions about that crazy example? The idea of the whole example was, though, not the square root of negative stuff, that was just me trying to give, give some idea about what real numbers are all about. The idea of the whole example is that making lists of numbers is not easy when there's an infinite number of numbers. Here's a weapon to easily make a list of all the numbers. You just write x element of reals or y element of reals. What do we got? Three more examples. This graph covers all the x values. It's the perfect next example. You go, well, for the x values, you can have any x value you want. You can take any x value and square it. You can square 2, you can square negative 2, you can square 7.4, you can square 7 million and 4, you can do whatever you want. So any x value is allowed. This graph keeps going on and on forever in either direction, x and y. So for the domain, x element of reals. Now, for the range, it doesn't have all the y values. You can't have y values below 0. You can only have y values greater than or equal to 0. When you see the graph, that's all that happens. Anytime you square something, you can't get negative numbers. <laughs> In our number system, okay, separate conversation, you know, uh, like literally second year university, math, you know, like gone for now. Well, for us, we can't square numbers and get, and get negative numbers. We're going to square and get positive numbers. What's the result of that? We still go. You can have any number you want. But, that's what this line means in math, that's all that means. But, the y's have to be greater than or equal to zero. And if you're not good with these greater than and less than symbols, well, you've got to get good starting now. We need those symbols all through this course and all through calculus. We've got to be able to know what we mean when we write this. So this means, in math terms, it means such that, you know, sort of, sounds fancy, right? Such that, it's very dramatic. And all it really means is, but, 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 wait, hang on, just a second. You can have all the y values, but those y values must be greater than or equal to zero. I'm hoping I'm framing the domain and range in such a way that you're seeing 
Oh, the, this is powerful. Yes, it's difficult to get used to how to write these symbols, but it's powerful stuff. Can you restrict both the domain and range? Well, here's something that came up in grade 10 for a moment. Yeah, in half a class one time in grade 10, drawing circles, the equation was like x squared plus y squared equals r squared. None of that matters today yet. The important thing is to know that, oh wait, maybe it doesn't come up on the homework. The equation of this thing, way back in grade 10, is x squared plus y squared equals 4. Weird equation, and you just sort of memorized it in grade 10 for a moment, wrote it down on the test, and got on with your life. It might come up in tonight's homework. I don't usually use it in the test, but to get through the homework, you might have to remember this equation. Um, what's the domain and range? Still x element or reals. Any x is allowed, decimals, fractions, all that stuff in between, but x has to be trapped between negative 2 and 2. You can't go lower than negative 2, and you can't go higher than positive 2. And so this is how we set it up when you've got to be trapped between two values. This is for when you're greater than something, and this is when you're trapped between two values. Do you see how negative 2 is less than all the x's? And x is less than or equal to all the... x never gets to be greater than 2. Same in the range. The range uses y element reals, and we've got to be trapped between negative 2 and 2. But, this is a little complicated in what it writes. Do you have any questions here? This is the first time today where I'm like, you got to tell me. If you got questions here, I want to talk about them. Who's got questions here? This is okay? You sort of remember this from grade 11? If you don't, because you're a COVID person, you just figured it out, look back in the textbook and just wrote it down, you don't know what's going on. We need this. Like it's not, uh, that's when you really know something in math is important. When it suddenly pops up in the next course, you're like, oh, I thought that was no big deal. I didn't even care. Here it is. It's back, and it's important. More time here? One last example. You might not have the dots on your picture. The, did the dots not print out on your picture? It never does. Okay, put a dot on either end, please. And that dot indicates no arrow. The arrows indicate this thing keeps going, but this is supposed to have dots to say, no, no, it stops here to here. This function only goes from here to here. So what do the x values do? The lowest x value is negative 2, the highest x value is 4. So the domain goes from negative 2 to 4. If you understood the previous example, this one's no different. And then the y values, high of 15, low of negative 1. You're just seeing what's the highest I can find, what's the lowest I can find. So it's trapped between negative 1 and 15. I did that example quickly because you were nodding, okay? And that's what's important about the nodding and shaking your head during my lessons. If you're nodding, I'll be like, okay, we can carry on. If you're shaking your head, it'll take another five or eight minutes to explain this, whichever is best, and we have to be time efficient. We can't be me up here teaching on and on and about stuff when you could be working on homework, yeah? But I pause for questions. What questions do you have about that example? More time? Who needs more time? <laughs>